sometimes we want a single user interaction to affect multiple components. For example, we might have a section of our website with several closed accordions. If a user presses a button saying expand all, we want all the accordions to open at the same time. Or let's imagine we're building a checkout form. Let's say the user already entered a shipping address. By default, that can be reused as their billing address. However, clicking a checkbox lets them enter a new one instead. Clicking that checkbox would make multiple form inputs appear or change the style of the entire form. In the previous course, we built two image carousels, one with larger images and one with thumbnails. We synchronized these carousels with events and actions. When the slide was changed in either carousel, we used a single action to update the other carousel. Now what if we add another component that should also be updated when a new slide is chosen? Suddenly, our event handlers have several actions each. Let's look at another example. What if we want to add more accordions to the expand all sections from the previous example? Every new accordion would have to have a new action. To solve this problem, we need to rethink about this in a different way. In programming, when we need to use the same value in multiple places, we use a variable. Whenever code uses that variable, it reads the current value stored there. If you update its value, any code referencing that variable sees a new value. We can do a similar thing on our websites. In our websites, we can store information in variables and reference those variables throughout our pages. When those variables are updated, the places where they are referenced will automatically update with the new values. For our carousel example, we could actually create a variable containing the currently selected slide. And then, whenever a user changes the slide on one of the carousels, we actually update that variable. Finally, we'll want to rework each carousel so its selected slide always matches the current value of the variable that we created. Also, if we add additional components that also need to know about the currently selected slides, they simply need to reference the variable we created. Now, let's look at this approach with respect to our expand all sections example. So first, we create a variable that represents whether all the accordions should be open or closed. Next, update each accordion so they open or close depending on the variable's current value. So when the user presses the expand all button, the variable changes value and then the accordions open or close accordingly. The types of variables we just discussed are called state variables. Setting up a component so that it changes when the value of a state variable is changed is called binding. In the following sections, we're gonna learn how to create state variables and set up bindings on our components using AMP. Fittingly, state variables are managed in AMP using the AMP state component and bindings are managed in AMP using the AMP bind component.